I've got one of the veterans of the sweet science, Abel Ramos. He's on a big undercard, March 25th, Caleb Plant versus David Benavides, Showtime pay-per-view. How you doing, Abel? I'm doing good, man. Training hard. Yeah, yeah, I, I know you are. And I listened to your uh, press conference uh, with Cody Crowley. you uh, got a big fight, uh, undefeated guy who's who's starting to make some noise. But listen, before we get into the fight, you know, as we were talking about at the beginning, you've been around for a while. You're in a, you know, Arizona, kind of a, what I consider a fight state. I'm in Texas, another state that loves their boxing. Talk about how you got started. You come from a boxing family. Your brother uh, was, a, you know, I think he fought, right? Uh, got into boxing, the fam kind of the family business. Yeah, yeah. My two older brothers used to, used to box in the amateurs. And um, that's that's how we um, that's how we started. We we used to watch every fight every weekend, and and then you know my brother decided to to start training us and took us to compete. Yeah, and and from what I read, you were you were overweight as a kid, you know. But you guys would get the big pay per views. You would practice like or envision your ring walk. You know, take take me back to that time as a as a kid. You know, you're watching like the legends, like the De La Hoyas, the Chavez, is Finito Lopez. I mean, the, the Mexican legends. Um, at that. Yeah, man, I I have good memories. You know, um, the fights used to, you know, as soon as they ended, we would bring out the gloves and go go against my brother. Man, he's he's a year older than me, so we used to we used to put on the gloves and. And that was that was it, man. I mean, we loved boxing. We we just loved it. It it, just, it was in your blood from the beginning. Yeah, yeah, now, of course. Uh, you you mentioned about you know Chavez Senior, Julio Cesar Chavez Senior, one of the legends of the sport, um, being your idol, and you know even to this day practicing that that left hook to the body. Have you have you met Chavez and um, had any conversations? No man, I haven't met haven't met my hero, man. Um, hopefully, hopefully soon, man. That that would be an honor for me to to have a conversation with him and just just appreciate his boxing, man. Tell him tell him that he he was an inspiration to me. Well, we need to get the WBC president Mauricio Solomon to to listen to this uh, interview and uh, make that happen for you. Yeah, but um, you're you're also you know talk about the family business. Your, your brother, or I'm sorry, your brother, your nephew, uh, Jesus, is the co-main event on this card. H how cool is that? It's awesome, man. It's awesome. It's a, it's going to be a great fight. Two undefeated fighters as well. Prospects coming up. <clears throat> I mean, that's that's exciting, man. And and how how good is your nephew? He's very good, man. He's very good. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a hell of a fight with uh, Joey Spencer, huh? Yeah, man, it should, man. But um, I think my nephew has the experience. He has a, he's just he's so young, man. But he's 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 a veteran in the ring, man. And I said it before, and then I think he's his experience is going to get him get him the win that night. All right. Well, I'm going to talk to him a little bit later today. But speaking of experience, uh, again, you've been around for for quite some time in your early 30s now, uh, 27 and five. Two draws, twenty-one knockouts. Uh, been in the ring with uh, Regis Progre. Uh, who else? Um, Ugas. You know these guys are are world champions. Um, Omar Figueroa. Who 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 was your toughest fight? Toughest fight. Oh man, I mean, there's been a, there's been a lot of tough fights in my career, man. Um, but um, I I think the the hardest one. For me, it was the Baranchik fight just because that was an all-out war. I think that was a that was a hard fight to get through, but I learned a lot from for myself that 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 um that fight, you know, that I can push through and and get through a war like that. Are you surprised? You, you fought Progre. I think it's been about eight years now, and he, he he's another dog. You know, he just he just keeps coming. Um, what what are you what are your thoughts on him? And now he's got a title again. Would you like another crack at him? Yeah, man. Um, I think I fought him when I was like twelve and old. No, it was early in my career, but I remember him just being real tricky, man. At, at that at that stage of our careers, he was he was already real tricky, real the slick southpaw. And um, yeah, man. Hopefully, hopefully down the line we can get it. Um, I still I 
I think he's still at 140, but maybe we can do something at 147 later on. That that would be a, that would be an amazing fight. Now let's talk about what you got coming up here on March 25th. You're on the undercard again of one of the biggest fights in boxing, at least scheduled at this point. Uh, two guys that clearly don't like each other, in Caleb Plant and, and David Benavides. You got a guy, Cody Crowley, who you know, 29 years old, you know, a little bit older, but he, he's now starting to make some noise um, in the sport. What are your thoughts on him? And as a fighter, just, you know, what are your thoughts on the fight overall? Yeah, man, as a fighter, I see him. I see him as a tough opponent. You know, he, he likes to come forward. He likes to put a lot of pressure on fighters. And um, I'm, I'm expecting a good fight from him, man. I'm expecting a good fight. But um, I think my experience and the, all the, the, the fights that I've had before, they're going to give me the, the, the key to, to the victory for this fight. He, he seemed to try to, like, get it under your skin a little bit. He, he seemed pretty aggressive on the conference call, I think it was yesterday. Um, but, obviously, you've been around. Uh, I'm sure that doesn't phase you. Yeah, man. Yeah, he had a lot to say. You know, he's saying that he's going to he's gonna be on me and he's going to be on, on me like glue. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, it's, it's good, man. It's good. It's good that he has that, that mentality, you know, but – um. It'll be a mistake coming forward against me, man. He also, I think, mentioned fighting in a phone booth. Have you ever fought in a phone booth? <laughs> man, look, look at that the the Baranchik fight, man. That's that was a that was a phone booth fight, man. and I think Baranchik was a lot stronger than him. So I know I'm not afraid to go to to fight in the in the fight booth and in, in the phone booth. I mean. Right, right. And, and what's it like, you know, you talked about your brother. You know, you guys. He started a, a gym in the family garage, I believe. Um, it's boxing's in your blood, you know, kind of that Mexican warrior, you know, but, I mean, what, what is it like to then have your brother in your corner as you know, you're on a, on a big card on, on Showtime. It's so cool, man. I mean, we, we used to dream about this, this fight. I remember in the garage, we used to talk and my brother always used to ask us questions because me and my, uh, another two brothers used to, used to box. We used to train at the same time. And um, he used to ask us questions like, well, what do you guys want from boxing? And we were young, man. And um, I remember telling him, man, I want to be a world champion. That's, that's, those are my dreams. And, and now that, that, that it's here, like it's big, big fights and big arenas. And, man, it's just, it's just amazing to, and to see that he's still with us and still believing in me, that's, that's, that's amazing. But even though it was your dream back then, you, you did have some some rough spells, you know, and some time off, and you almost hung up the gloves at one point. What what was going on uh, back then? Yeah, man, it was it was hard because you know after the amateurs, we thought I, I was I was already tired of the amateurs. Um, I wanted to turn pro, and I just we we had no idea how the pro business went. You know how the how to get fights, how to get any of that stuff, and you know being a young a young young man at the time had my girlfriend. I wanted to, you know, take her out to eat. I had have money at least, you know, to to go out. And um, yeah, man, I considered I considered stopping boxing, just getting a job and and moving on forward. But no, my my brothers always always supported me, and they they told me, no, don't don't give up, man. Like you're you're close. And I'm glad I'm glad I listened to them. No regrets. No regrets. Nope. Yeah, and, and you talked about, you know, wanting to become a world champion when you're a kid, you know, you're young, you know, active and hungry. Is that still the goal, hoping this this fight kind of launches you into a title fight? Yes, of course, man. That's still the goal. That's still the dream. And um, that's that's what gets me up every every morning, man. Just I want to I accomplish that dream. Let me ask you, too, uh, Abel, and I'm here with Abel Ramos. Uh, boxing's the family business. Got a big fight coming up March 25th under Caleb Plant, David Benavides. Talking about David Benavides, um, an another Mexican warrior, um, his dad, another family business, his dad trained him and, and his younger brother was, who was highly touted, uh, Jose Jr., coming out of the amateurs and si signed by top rank, I think the youngest at the time. Um, do you, both, you know, ties to Arizona. I don't think they're there now. I think they're in Washington State. But do, do you guys have any relationships there? Have you guys worked together in the past? Oh yeah, man, lots of times. You know, they we were they were from Arizona, so we used to get a lot of sparring with Junior. 
with Jose Benavides Jr. We used to get a lot of sparring sessions in, and I remember seeing David. You know, he was a young kid, and, man, you, you can tell he was talented by then, man. He was sparring big guys and beating them up. So, you know, they the Benavides are good. Good um, They have good boxing skills, man. Yeah, and if I recall, David's backstory may be similar to yours. He was a he was a chubby kid growing up, and just got into the ring. You know, got into boxing. You know, through the family, and you know, here he is today. You know, former two time world champion. Yeah, man, it's crazy. That's that's how, that's how it starts sometimes, man. You just gotta you want to make a change in your life, and you you don't know that that change is gonna change your entire life and entire future. So you're not you're not surprised by David's success then? No, not at all, man. And, and it's hard to to um like like my nephew, you know, he was he was around boxing his whole life. You know, it, it's hard for them not to be successful in boxing because that's that's all they see, man. And um, but of course they they gotta want it too. You know, they gotta they gotta have a passion for it. But um, yeah, man, just any like any of my little nephews, like they know how to fight just because they they're. They're around boxing so much that they they just know how to fight. So speaking of your other nephews, uh, besides uh, your your one fighting on the same card, you see any others in the family that might have potential talent? Yeah, of course. Um, well, Jesus is um a uh, little brother. His name's Jonathan Ramos. He's he's in the amateurs now, fighting, and he's doing real good too, man. So I'm sure I'm sure there he's already being scouted then. Yeah, for sure, man. He's getting groomed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Again, we're here with uh, Abel Ramos. Uh, we'll wrap it up here in a minute. Jeff Zimmerman with FightNews.com. How much longer, Abel? You know, you are you are a little bit older, although you know, early thirties. You do want a title shot. How, how many more years do you see in your in your career? Man, I've, I'll see. I'll see how my body's my body's doing. You know, later on. Right now, I feel good. I feel fresh. I feel. I feel young, man. You know, I I feel like I, I feel like I can still be in the in the sport for a long time. So, but um, hopefully, man, I'm 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 hoping five, six more years. Oh wow! Okay, all right. So plenty of time. Let, yeah. Let's do let's do some quick predictions here. Um, you know, there's again big fights. Hopefully, will get made. Some have already been announced, but um, let's let's talk about the one on the card you're on, Plant Benavides. Who do you like? And and why? Um, I like Benavides, Benavides to win by maybe by a stoppage in the later rounds. I think um Caleb is gonna give him a good fight, maybe for four or five rounds, because he has good boxing ability. But um, I believe Benavides' pressure, his his output is just gonna it's gonna be too much for for Caleb Plant. How about uh, Tank Davis and and King Rai, Ryan Garcia? That's a good one, man. That's a good one. Um, I'm I'm leaning towards Davis a little bit just because of his experience, and um, but it wouldn't surprise me if, if Ryan could could beat him, man, because he he's explosive, he's got power, and he's big. So, I uh, I wouldn't be surprised if 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 Ryan catches him and beat and beats him, but I'm leaning towards Davis more. Any chance that fight goes the distance? Um. It could, it could. I think, I think it could. I think Davis is a, is a smart fighter. If he feels the power, he's gonna box him. He's gonna use his rings experience to to box him and move around. But um, that's the only way I see that that fight going to distance. What What about uh, Haney, Devin Haney, and, and Lomachenko? I think Haney. I think Haney got that one. Um, Lomachenko hasn't been looking like himself lately, and I think at one thirty five, he was never like a big a big fighter at 35 and Haney is big, man. Haney's big. He's fast. He's young. So I would give the, the edge to Haney on that one. And possibly if this fight were ever to get made, uh, Spence and Crawford, uh, who do you like in that? Oh, that's a good one, man. I think that's a, <laughs> that's a 50, 50 fight, man. And if I would have to give the edge to somebody, I think it would be Crawford, man, just because he's so, so athletic. He has the, that switch he he's a switch hitter you know he can go from from southpaw to orthodox and just his i think i think i'll lean a little bit towards crawford but i think that's a that's a 50 50 fight that would, that would be a great fight yeah let, let, let's hope it happens right yeah for sure 
Well, listen, man, you get, like I said, you got a big fight on your hands. Um, you got a lot of uh, years ahead of you, as you mentioned, but um, this is a, a big fight, you know, for your career, I would imagine, an undefeated guy in Cody Crowley who's looking to make some noise. What should we expect on Saturday, March 25th on the undercard of Showtime pay-per-view? You guys should expect a great fight, man. I'm always, I'm always, I always go into the ring, you know, with the winning mentality and with the, with the, the mission to make the fans happy that night. So they're going to, they're going to see a good show and we're going to, we're going to get that, that win. Awesome, man. Abel, I appreciate the time. I wish you nothing but success in this fight and, and going on and uh, looking forward to it and uh, good luck on March 25th. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Thank you.